Okay, and we're back. We are going to, now we're going to do question nine. Okay, so question nine is another cubic graph. You might be saying, Mugs, why is it cubic? Well, it's cubic because the power is three, right? And that is the definition of a cubic. So now it's asked us a bunch of derivative questions. It's also asked us for the second derivative. Don't panic, right? These things are all things we've done before and we just apply a certain sort of algorithm, right? So let's jump into it. Okay, remember to always label your questions. I am actually quite tardy at doing this, but let's just jump in. Okay, so we have f of x equals 3x cubed. Okay, let's see what it says. It says solve f of x equal to f dashed of x. So basically it's saying get the derivative and see where these two... Um, where these two graphs, right? Because remember, one is a derivative graph, right? And one is just the cubic graph that we have there. See where those two graphs intersect. So first, let's get the derivative. So let's get that first, okay? Remember, notation, very important. The derivative is not the same as the base function. It is the gradient of the base function. So it's gonna be nine x squared, okay? So now we wanna say, where does f of x equal f dashed of x. So it's 3x cubed equaling 9x squared, right? So let's divide through by 3. We get x3 equals um, 3x squared. Let's bring it all onto um, one side. I'm just going to do it this way, just, just a little bit easier for you, girl. Um, oh, my nose is itchy. Okay. So let's take, let's do a little bit of factorization here. We can do x squared, and then we left with 3 minus x. Okay. So we know, right, if we want to solve, right, if we want to solve this, we know that x can either equal 0 or 3 minus x. Let me check you can see what I'm writing. 3 minus x can equal 0, okay, right, which means that negative x equals negative 3, x equals 3. Okay, so those are the two. Okay, so that's pretty simple, eased us in, nothing too hectic. Let's now see what else is required of us. Okay, now, sometimes these questions that come, I'm like, I also get a bit, a bit a little, like my, my heart rate rises a bit, but let's not panic, let's just go about it, right? So 9.2 says the graph of f um, and the, the derivative graph and the second derivative graph all pass through this point. Right, and you should know that this point is the origin. Okay, remember, origin is where. Oh, Margs, that's very strange. Arrows you're drawing, drawing there. The origin is where the x and the y axis, right, in the Cartesian plane, they intersect. Okay. Then it says here, um, for which of the graphs will zero will the origin be a stationary point? Okay, so let's just quickly get these different derivative so 9.2.1 okay so f of x we said is 3x to the 3 f dashed of x is 9x squared and f double dashed of x is 18x okay so it says where is it a stationary point now what it's testing is it's testing whether we understand what a stationary point is, right? Because technically zero and zero is a point on all of these graphs, right? If you put zero into here for x, you'll get zero for y. That's not what they're asking. A stationary point, right, and it's very important, is a turning point or a point of inflection. Now, we know, right, that a straight line, which is what the second derivative is, over here, right? Doesn't have a point of inflection and it doesn't have a turning point, right? But we know that a, a parabola, right? This is a parabola, has a turning point, right? So we know that that one definitely does. And we know with a cubic, right? What's amazing with cubic is we have both, right? We have a turning point and a stationary and, and a point of inflection, right? So we have stationary points and points of inflection. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm writing like a non -no here. Okay, so we have both, right? Because you see there, there's the turning points, but a point of inflection, remember, it's where I'm going up and my gradient starts changing. Do you see that, 
right? The point of inflection is kind of like there often. Okay, so it's where my gradient changes, okay? So you see there, that's like, what do you call that? It's a con con concave to convex. And the point of inflection is at that point where that changes, okay? So we know that it's going to be for f of x and f dashed of x. Maybe don't put a plus because in maths that means something else. Okay, cool. So now we've done that question. So let's move on to 9.2.2. So it says, explain the differences, if any, in the stationary point referred to in 9.2.1. So basically what it's saying now, we know for, it's saying, is it a turning point or is it a point of inflection? That's effectively what they're saying, okay? So we need to figure out for the parabola, okay, and for the um, cubic, whether this point at the origin, right, is a point of inflection or if it is a um, turning point, right? So we know for f dashed of x, okay, right, we know that that is going to be a turning point. The reason we know that is because there aren't any stationary points. I mean, there, there aren't any points of inflection for a parabola. So we know for f of x, it's a turning point, right? Don't write TP like me. Don't be an honor. Write turning point out, right? You must always make sure that you're explaining more to your examiner than is strictly necessary. Never assume they know these things. Even though they do, they want to know whether you know these things, okay? So then we need to look at f of x, okay? Now, so what we want to do is we want to look at whether this at, uh, um, sorry, at zero and zero, right? We want to know if it is a point of inflection, right? We want to know if it's a point of inflection or a turning point. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is, I think what we can do is you can either, you can kind of draw a little bit, right, if you want, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to figure it out via drawing. What you could do is you could probably get the second derivative, I'm just trying to think what you could do here. You could get the second derivative, which is a straight line. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you have to actually kind of trial and error it. I think you can possibly use sort of algebraic means if you want to. Um, I can't actually recall them right now, so I'm just going to go and draw it. You might not have time to do this. That's okay. Just put a star here. Come back to it later. Don't panic. Okay, cool. So we're drawing, um, what are we drawing? We're drawing the cubic, right? So we're drawing this guy. So I'm just going to sub in one zero, negative one. Okay, so we know at negative one is going to equal negative three, okay? And we know that at um, zero is going to equal zero, and at one is going to equal three, okay? So I would tend to think it's a point of inflection because, look, so it's going to go like, ooh, look at us. It's a point of inflection, okay? a point of inflection. So it wasn't too difficult, right? So yeah, it's not a, a turning point. It is a point of inflection. Okay, cool. Perfect. So let us now move on to 9.3. Okay. So it says determine the vertical distance between the second derivative and the second, I mean, the first derivative and the second derivative at x equals one. Okay, so now you could be thinking, what is going on here? So we're going to say the distance, right, is going to be your f of, um, what do we say? The f, the distance. So I'm just going to say f first derivative minus f second, f, what am I saying? f of the, I'm just going to say the second derivative because the words seem to be failing in your girl today. Um, okay, so we're going to do this. Okay, perfect. Now let's just sub this in. Okay, so we know that this is going to be 9, 1 minus 18, 1. Okay, and that equals negative 9. Now, importantly, guys, we are talking about distance. Distance can never be negative. What does negative distance even mean? That doesn't mean anything, right? So we actually say the distance... Distance equals 9, 
units. You can say units if you want, right? I generally like to put something with um, like some form of measurement with distance because when we are talking about distance, we want to put a measurement because it is something that has a measurement, okay? So never ever leave distance negative. That makes no sense. Like if I'm going to my friend's house, I can't be like, yeah, I'm traveling negative five kilometers. Like that makes no sense. No sense. Regardless of the direction that I'm going in, I will or it will always be positive. Okay, so that's 9.3. That was actually really easy. Solidly done. Okay, let's now move on to 9.4, which is our last question. Sweet of nine. Okay, so it says, for which value of x is f of x minus the second derivative, right, greater than zero? Okay, so let's just write that down. Okay, so we have f of x minus the second derivative of x less than zero. Our first derivative is 3x, I mean, it's not first derivative, just f of x is 3x cubed minus 9x squared. Okay, let's just, we can just divide through by three, that's fine. x3 minus 3x squared. See, we've actually already done this exercise before. But that's okay. Okay, so we know that it's going to equal zero when x equals zero. But here it's said strictly, right? It says, oh, sorry, I'm not dropping my pen here. It says strictly less than, not equal to, strictly, strictly less than. Okay, that's really important, right? It's really important that you understand your inequalities, right? So we're trying to get the values of x that are strictly less than zero. But what's important here is regardless of what x we put in for an x squared, it's going to be positive, right? You can put in negative 100 and it will still be a positive output, okay? So this we know is never going to be negative. So this is what has to be negative, right? Because we know that this side inevitably, the whole of the side has to be negative. Because to be less than zero, you have to be a negative number. But we're not going to get it from our, from our girl x squared. We must get it from our girl x minus three, okay? So we want x minus three to be less than zero. So x has to be less than three, okay? And then we also say here, x cannot equal zero, okay? And the reason x cannot equal zero is because then you actually break the inequality, right? If you put zero in here, right, then you're going to get zero on this side. And then it's going to say zero is less than zero. And that makes no sense. So that's why you have to put this in here to make sure you're actually displaying that you understand inequalities to your examiner, okay? So this is your answer. Put this in. Always good to put in your restrictions, right? You're actually going to mark for doing this. And that is this question finished. I hope that was helpful. Uh, this one was a little bit of a tricky question. Um, if there's some things you don't understand, I would advise you go over it again. Um, but that is question nine done. Solid. Two questions left, some probability in the hood, and then we're out.